Go via Skype now and speak with Dr. Augustina Silver King. She's with a KCCR. Doc, good morning. Many, many, many mm. thanks for your time. Good morning. Good morning to you and your cherished viewers and listeners. Right. We have 313 confirmed cases as we speak. What does that mean for us? Should that scare us as a people? <laughs> um, <laughs> interesting question whether this should scare us as a people. So I don't think this needs to scare us as, as a people because now we are doing the aggressive testing and the aggressive <laughs> contact tracing. So I have the 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 map, um, the, the infographics on okay. the Ghana Health Service webpage. Mm. And if we look at them um, on the 30th of March, um, when we logged, there was a partial lockdown right. in, in Greater Accra and a part of, part of Greater Accra as well as part of Greater Kumasi. So mm. we see some rising and some falling of, um, in terms of cases. And this is actually expected because now you try to limit movement. Mm -hmm. So invariably, you try to limit the spread of the, of the infection. Okay. And if you, as a mitigation strategy, you have incorporated active testing and active contact tracing, mm. then you definitely need to see an increase in terms of the numbers. Okay. Now, if you don't see any numbers in terms of escalating, then it should actually worry you. But mm. now that we are doing the active testing, active contact tracing, then the expectation is that the numbers need to go high or to go up. Are we, are we doing enough in that, in that space? Uh, I know that many, many theorists have said that because we are not testing, we are not able to tell what the actual numbers are. From where you sit, from the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, are we doing enough of this, the contact tracing, the testing? I mean, I can speak for the Ashanti region, and I always comment the regional health directorate. So they have organized series of trainings for district health directors. They have um, met the contact tracers. They have given them a lot of education. So the contact tracing is aggressively and actively ongoing. And we sit in the lab, and when we look at the number of samples coming in, mm -hmm. it's amazing. So it means that actually people are working, people are bringing, they are bringing in the samples and we are doing the testing. That's how come we currently see the numbers going up. But I don't think this needs to, to scare us okay. because, you know, um, like WHO record. Well, unfortunately, uh, internet is, is misbehaving there. And uh, Elan Kras said he just got 30 megabytes of credit from his network provider has his birthday gift. Doctor, welcome so the back. the lockdown should enable you incorporate... No, no, ah, could, you, could, you please, should could you please uh, readjust the screen so we can see your beautiful face? <laughs> yes. <Well. laughs> yes, so once, once you incorporate a, a mitigation strategy, i.e. this partial lockdown, mm. then the, the idea or the smart objective okay. is that you've got to expand mm -hmm. your testing You've got to limit movement. You are just whiling away the time. Okay. It doesn't mean that the virus is not so around. The mm -hmm. virus is around. But you want to make sure that you have incorporated certain measures so that in terms of uh, people who will be moving and spreading the infection, mm -hmm. it would some way, somehow be reduced. Okay. But then by so doing, if you have your um, active testing and active contact tracing, then you've got to definitely see an increase in the numbers. Doc, how many samples uh, do you get on a daily basis at KCCR? I'm just curious. I, to I ought, <laughs> usually, I'm not interested in putting figures out, but we, we receive a lot, a lot, more than 500, a lot. Okay, on a daily basis? We receive, yes, on a, I mean, I, I, yesterday I decided to, to take some pictures. Uh, there were a lot of cars lined up, mm. and uh, they were all bringing in samples. So the, in, the, in the Ashanti region, and I'm, I'm sure as well as in the greater Accra region, the active tracing, the active contact um, tracing as well mm, as the mm. active testing is actively and aggressively ongoing. Okay. My only challenge has to do with the general public uh, okay. attitude, especially when it comes to this no, contact no, no, tracing. Hold, hold on for me. Let, let's see your face. Let, may you keep the phone stable a bit? So, yes. Your head was in the sky. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm it's better now. We can see you now. All right. This position is fine. Yes. So you're worried about the, the general public. What, what are your concerns? So we've been asked to 
um, maintain or adhere to social distancing. Maybe we've got to rephrase it to physical distancing. Okay. Because it, it's as if people are still not getting the import of what we have been talking about. Mm. Um, so maybe we may want to um, scale up our education strategies. I mean, so far we have been giving our population mm -hmm. or our citizenry some information. Okay. But we know that information and education, they mm. are different. So, for example, why must I sit at home? Right. Why don't I have to get up and move up and down? Mm -hmm. Why am I expected to be washing my hands? Maybe we want to couple or we want to add on right. some bit of education to the, the, the information we have so far been given our general population. Okay. The, the virus, we are told, has taken a different turn. It's now become airborne. Are you able to confirm that? And why you confirm that? How does that change how we deal with the virus at all? So um, if this is coming from the WHO, then I think it's a laudable idea because mm. I have been battling with this airborne communicable and so on and so forth. Okay. So that if it is airborne, then expectations are that, look, once somebody sneezes, coughs or wheezes without covering his or her mouth or into his or her flexed arm, mm. then chances are that the virus will be suspended in the air. Right. And this virus, I call it a smart virus. Mm -hmm. And research has shown that the virus is able to stay on some surfaces, so i.e. plastic surfaces, mm. copper surfaces, and some other metal surfaces for about some few minutes to some few days, not hours. So it means that if you are outside and um, the virus is in the air, you may be exposed to it. Of course, we don't want to be like the UK, where initially they said they wanted to achieve something known as head immunity, forgetting about the fact that this is a virus, not a vaccine. Mm. So we don't want people to be going about and be saying that, oh, just everybody become exposed. Okay. I mean, our situation is different from what um, what goes on or what transpires in the UK and in America. Mm -hmm. We, for us, we are already challenged. And I'm sure some people are already thinking through a lockdown. I heard some people aggressively talking about or vouching out for a nationwide lockdown. Mm -hmm. But can we really be able to contain it? Mm. I have kept on saying that whether partial, impartial, total or whatever, mm -hmm. we should have some very smart objectives okay. behind every single thing we are doing. Okay. And we also need to be occasionally or almost every now and then doing something known as monitoring and evaluation. Okay. So are we doing well? Are we not doing well? Can we change our strategies? For example, when you, when you drive abroad. Mm. Man. <sighs> interesting. Oh. Interesting thoughts. Yes, talk, talk your back. LED um, screens. Mm -hmm. So can we already... Just when we're enjoying the conversation, uh, it's, the internet decides to, to fix it. But she she's makes a very, very detailed points there mm -hmm. regarding how we should be approaching this as, as a people and whether we should be changing our strategy as oh. we make progress. Okay. But I think Doc is back. Well, oh, let's, we try, let's try to raise her back on the line it. and okay. see... Uh, back on Skype and right. see if we can yeah. we can get it because I'm I'm interested in what she's saying Absolutely. that we need to change the the strategy as we make progress. I don't know what you think. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm. Well, I mean, she won't be the only one talking about the structure mm. because even Doctor. Betha Ayi is also asking for yeah. a national lockdown. Mm. And what she's saying is that she's even surprised that the WHO is not championing a global lockdown, okay. like complete lockdown in every country. Because mm. for her, we all watched how the US and Italy and France and Spain sat down and watched mm -hmm. as you know people traveled from China to various parts of the world and mm. they eventually spread the virus. Yeah. If they had done a total lockdown of China from the beginning, it would have helped. Okay. And so she thinks yeah. that even in Ghana, we should do the same as well, mm. complete mm. lockdown. Mm. Complete lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Can do we, we have, afford, can do we we have afford what it? it takes to... But, to but would you it? rather have people dying instead of saving okay. them? Mm. Let's go back to Doc. Doc, welcome. Mm. Thank you very much. Oh, oh we, we lost, lost Doc again. again. Mm. Internet. Internet. You know, they charge us so much for that internet. That She's back. Who, oh, yeah. She, Doc. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it looks like technology is playing with us it's today. A, it's a doomsoric internet. Doc, welcome back. Yes. Thank you. I mean, this internet... Yes. 
Forgive it. It's, it's, <coughs> it's very disrespectful. <laughs> but but you, are, you are talking about um, looking at our strategy day in, day out and changing it if we, if we can. At the announcement of the closure of the borders, the government announced or gave indicators of what they were looking out for to achieve, stop the spread, uh, stop spreading fear, spread calm, and make sure that we are protecting and locking out every, every bit of the virus. In your opinion, from where you sit and with the numbers that flow in every day, do you think that that objective has been achieved? Um, absolutely. So, for example, we kept on um, saying that for those who got into the country, was um, locked mm. or we, we enhanced them we introduced the the mandatory quarantine we should mm. make sure at least we get um, information through the ghana immigration services mm. get their numbers mm. and follow them quarantine them take their samples and test those samples right and from where we sit we have been receiving samples from such people some of them have tested positive mm. as most of them have tested negative okay. so i think um, in that line of objective um, we have done we have done very well i mean the contact tracing is still ongoing mm. the aggressive testing is still ongoing if we if we take for example the the factors or the numbers that we're told the uh, electrification numbers as i like to call it one person gets it means that 10 people are getting it 10 means that 100 100 a thousand a thousand a uh, million, uh, 10,000 and on, on to that. Out of every 10 samples you get, how many people test positive? Do you know? Um, so uh, usually you, this is, this is, this is, uh, maybe you can look at maybe out of a hundred. Okay, let's because look at a hundred. If you actually, if you actually look at the number we've tested mm. and the number being positive, we are hovering around 0.34%. Okay. Percent. Uh, in terms of this active um, or aggressive contact tracing and aggressive testing. Mm. And for me, it's as if the virus is um, behaving differently um, in Africa. Because if you look elsewhere, mm. it's like there's, there, there's an exponential, exponential growth. But mm. in, in Africa, it's as if uh, maybe uh, some factors such as... Um, Maybe we have been exposed severally to mm. uh, quite a number of respiratory mm. viruses. I mean, we have received several doses of vaccinations. Okay. So these are just my personal speculations. Okay. So maybe the virus, we, we may have some level of immunity mm. against other mm. respiratory viruses. But again, these are early days yet. Okay. I mean, if you look at, if, if you look at the numbers from, from Ghana, mm -hmm. from the... Wow, we lost talk there. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we should not struggle with it over and over again. I, I'd wanted to find out particularly uh, issues regarding strengthening our immune system, for example. That conversation has been ongoing. People have been spreading a lot of theories, uh, garlic and ginger and mm -hmm. lemon and lime and hot water. And so I, I, want, I wanted to find out from here mm -hmm. what the actuality is. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they know what's yeah. in there in the, in the, in the, water, in the laboratories. Mm -hmm. They should be able to tell us. I also wanted to find out mm -hmm. from her what it means to be managing the cases from home. Mm -hmm. Because if I live in a, in a single room with my wife and my children, mm -hmm. and you're asking me to go and manage my case at home, mm -hmm. when you know I'm positive and I have the virus, and I should be in isolation, in isolation. isolation. how do I manage it? Manage because it, yeah. everybody who is sent home, the assumption is that you have another room where you can, where you can stay, yeah, stay and not interact and get into mm -hmm. contact with people. Mm -hmm. Now, if I am just in my room, maybe, maybe, but you know, so Doc is back. Doc, quickly, finally, let, let's try and get um, this done. The conspiracy theories about uh, strengthening your immune system, garlic and ginger and <laughs> hot water, and I'm sure you've heard some of them. <laughs> you are in the lab. What do you say? These are all men. They are men. I mean, how, how, what sort of uh, hot temperature can you drink? Some people are even of the opinion that, look, that uh, hand sanitizer, drink it.
But, <laughs> uh, I mean, this it is meant for the hunt. Mm. So these are just theories. And look, the best strategy mm. is to make sure you are washing your hands severally and okay. thoroughly mm. with clean water and with soap. Mm. I say that, look, wash your hands like 25 times a day, okay. minimum. And importantly, let us be using the hand sanitizers, right. co which contains at least 60% of ethanol. Mm. And more importantly, let us make sure that we are adhering strictly okay. to the physical distancing. Right. Because look, if we don't do that, mm -hmm. then definitely the virus will spread, okay. the numbers will escalate, our health systems will be overwhelmed, and uh, it will be a huge issue in our country. So, let, for, I mean, I'm not interested in the garlics and the hot waters mm. and the bathing super hot water and things yeah. like that. Maybe mm. we haven't really educated our people on how the virus is. Okay. Because this virus, naturally, when it is on its own, it is inactive. It is okay. innate. Okay. It only needs to get into a living cell. Wow. And the living cell, it is such that it wants to go into your lungs mm. because it has something known as receptors. Okay. It wants to get hooked onto those receptors mm. and then produce more of itself. And look, all pathogens are such that they always want to produce themselves in very high numbers okay. so that they can get out of your system and reinfect others. Mm -hmm. Now, the best strategy is to make sure that we are covering our mouth when we cough, when we sneeze, when we wheeze. And we are using the hand sanitizers as well as washing our hands because, again, the, the virus is, uh, is an enveloped virus. So mm. it has an envelope covering itself. Wow. So if we are able to use these uh, sanitizers and washing our hands, mm. we are able to break down this envelope so that we get to the virus, inactivate it or kill it. But if you eat garlic or you chew garlic or you drink hot water, Look, the virus will never be dislodged. Somebody said you have to drink water so that the virus can get <laughs> into your gut. But the virus is not interested in getting into your gut. Right. It wants to get into your lungs. And when you drink water, it doesn't go into your lungs. Wow. So maybe we need to be educating our, 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 our individuals in our communities and in our country mm -hmm. so that they will be able to appreciate how the virus works, how it manipulates itself, how it manifests itself. Hmm. Maybe once we do some of these things, chances are that people will understand okay. and adhere to the mitigation strategies we have always been recommending. Doc, finally to you, uh, so people are told to go home and they will be treated from home or monitored from home. Is that realistic, especially if you live in a single room or a chamber and hall with your wife and children? Do you put them at risk by going home to be monitored from home or are they not at risk? <clears throat> I mean, of course, we know that um, out of the population who gets the infection, close to 80% of them will present with a mild form of the infection. Mm. And these people, it's like getting a normal so-called uh, Qatar. Mm -hmm. You can, this can be managed at <clears throat> home. But of course, if you test positive and you live in a single room or a chamber and a hall, mm. then it means that you have to devise certain strategies. So, for example, if you have just one bathroom and just one washroom, mm -hmm. then the members of the house mm -hmm. would need to use the washroom and the bathroom before you go in there. Right. And once you go in there, for example, when you have visited the restroom, you have to, and you want to flush the, the WC, you have to close it because you don't want the creation of aerosols. When you flush the water closet, mm -hmm. you see water gushes out. Right. Now, if you have visited the loo and you are flushing it, it behoves on you to cover the seats okay. and do the flushing. And of course, it will become very important that every now and then you also disinfect your house so you wipe surfaces because, mm. like I said, the virus is able to stay or live on surfaces for some few minutes to some days. So once you do, and of course, if you have to be fed, then, for example, your food may be left behind the door, you come for it, mm. it's, it will be very challenging. No, but no, no, that's, that's, a tall, that's a tall order, and it does appear to me that yes. by, this, by this, it means that managing cases from home or at home uh, is, is a risky <clears throat> thing. And, and the wearing of masks. 
would also become very, very, very important, especially for those who are affected and mm. are living in a single room or a chamber in a hall. And we know that uh, already the ministry will very soon uh, provide people with um, homemade nose masks mm -hmm. or in-country <clears throat> locally made no no smarts. Right. It will become very important that we don't wait till the no smarts are dirty. So mm -hmm. for example, you can also have your seventy percent ethanol okay. and then dip your no smarts in in it okay. and hang it in the sunlight for some few minutes mm. and then just put it on. Okay. So if we if we end up um, putting in these strategies, we will be able these are difficult times. Mm. The the important thing is that we don't want our health systems to be overwhelmed. I keep on saying mm. that, look, even the few ventilators we have in the country, mm -hmm. how many people are able to survive mm. when they are put on those ventilators? Mm. So the first thing is to even prevent people from getting onto those ventilators. And I guess once we put in these mitigation um, factors or mm. strategies, we'll be able to limit. It's only about spread of the virus. We will be able to limit the spread of the virus. I, I, I said, it's not as if to say people will not get the infection. Some people will get the infection. And again, we may also want to be even advising our older population okay. because elsewhere where some partial lockdowns have been introduced, mm. there's something known as mitigation strategies okay. where the most at-risk population, mm -hmm. such as older people, such as those with some underlying health um, conditions, okay. i.e. Um, respiratory-related conditions mm. such as asthma, Okay. People who are diabetic, mm -hmm. people who have hypertension, for example, these people need to be advised. And um, if if you look at um, the bar charts on the on the on the website, mm. you realize that it, it's it's as if um, for us um, the most active population tend to have uh, the infection. Mm. So we can be advising them to actually be adhering to the social distancing okay. to be staying at home mm. we should also be advising them not to be visiting um, grandma and grandpa yeah. because they are um, at a very high risk of um, getting the infection so a lot of things we we mm. need to be mm. doing at the same time I don't know if you have a mask there, but because you mentioned the mask, I've seen people wear the mask in many different ways. Some say, especially those on the market now, you have uh, one with a blue, blue, uh, blue covering on one side and a white covering on the other side, and people are touching the mask. And I don't know if you have a mask to quickly demonstrate for us how we oh, wear this. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm at home, so I don't have one, one on me. Okay. But how to wear it and even how to remove it is very, very, very important. Okay. Because remember, we've also been advising that you don't want to be touching your face. You don't want to be touching your mouth. You don't okay. want to be touching your nose. Mm. And this nose mask is expected to hold onto your nose and your mouth. Mm. Now, if in wearing and in removing it, you already end up touching your nose and your mouth, then you have already ended up introducing the virus into your mouth mm -hmm. or your nose. And look, this virus always wants to get through your mouth, through your nose and get, nose and get into your lungs. So even how you wear it and how you remove it is very, very, very important. Doc, I thank you very much uh, for your time and I wish you all the best thank you. as you go to the lab thank this morning. Sa much. Save lives. Thank you. Grateful. That's Dr. Augustina Silverkin. She's a researcher with the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, and she's joined us uh, via Skype to, to share some light with us and knowledge with us. I hope you've been very educated on that.